I had a mother that raised me, and now I have a mother that I have to care for. They're two different mothers. Mom, get your coat in your pocketbook. Let's go. You taking your sweater off? Or you leaving it on? Yeah. Your buttons are funny. Work part time. I basically quit my full time job to tend to my mother and. I'm trying to figure out ways to reinvent myself and be there for her as she grows in her dementia. They were working people. Mom was a bookkeeper at the garage and dad was the salesman. And, you know, we traveled a lot. Every summer we went up to Cornish in our camper and, you know, we just, normal American family. <laughs> you need two nightgowns or one? One. Okay, we can get rid of one of these. Which one do you want? This one. Okay. Put this one away. Okay, we need one. No, we need two. These are things that you don't think you're ever going to be doing. You know, I never thought that I was going to take care of my mother. Never in a million years. Everybody in her family died at 69. She's 79. What I found out, the best way I understand it, and I don't know, I'm not a doctor by any means. I'm just a common old lady that, you know, just, you know, living my life just like you. But with... Alzheimer's, you tend to go like this. With vascular dementia, you tend to go like this and like this. On the 15th of August, that same day was the day I had to take mom for the final diagnosis, which was really interesting because she has vascular dementia with a touch of Alzheimer's. The blood is not getting to the brain, the blood's not getting to the kidneys, it's not getting, it's not going to circulate. Um, and eventually she'll probably die of kidney failure. And so at that point we decide, okay, we need to make sure all our T's are crossed, all our I's are dotted, and that, in fact, this is going to be a long haul. I keep telling everybody I was kicked in the gut because I really didn't know how bad it was that day. They looked at me and said, she really shouldn't probably be home alone by herself for long periods of time. And I'm like, okay, now I've got a part-time job. How am I going to do this? Can I fix your sweater, Mom, please? What's wrong with it? You cook it. I don't cook it. Yes, you are. You cook it. Too damn fussy. Yeah, I know. Pain in the ass. <laughs> nice day. Every Wednesday is Mother's Day. Um, Mother's Day is, is the day that we do doctors, we do the banking, we do the hairdresser, we go out to lunch and set up her meds, make sure that she's got her meds set up for the week, um, and then just do the household chores that, you know, don't get done because, um, you know, worrying about doing other things like making her meals and making sure she's, she's clean. I get, my son says I move fast. My friend Chris says I move fast. My friend Laura says I move fast. Okay, here we go. Ready or not? <laughs> but when I crash, I crash. <laughs> One of my biggest fears is, is what am I going to do when I have to take her to work with me every day? Oh, good. Um, because that will come. Well, that keeps you out of trouble. <laughs> This is her six by six squares, and it's to keep her mind sharp and to keep her active so that she feels like she's doing something. And I'm just saving it, and when she dies, I'll uh, make something for her three grandsons. You know, and it's therapeutic for me, too, because I know that she's played with it and she's put her heart into this. The hardest part is watching her disappear. But you know what, again, it's gonna make me a stronger person. Who knows where it's gonna lead me? I mean, maybe I'll be running a support group or maybe I'll be working for the Alzheimer's Association the next thing I know. I don't know. Yeah, I could throw her away and I could put her in a nursing home and I could say, screw it. But it's my mother. I can't do that. It would be like me throwing away my kid. You know, I can't do that. It's somebody I love and care for that cared for me.